The day you discover the unique gift in you is the day you start to live the real life. Try to skip your eyes from what is available and focus on what you're passionate about. Is it goat farming, cattle rearing, poultry, anything? Everything gets better when you discover the secret. Welcome to Farm Smart Show with me, Chris Chitak Haman, your host here at Smart24 TV, looking at agribusiness, specifically in goat rearing. Well, rearing goats in Uganda is so privileged because goat meat is widely consumed in Africa and beyond. Particularly in Uganda, it is considered a premium option to beef. Therefore, there is a huge unmute domestic market. The question is, are you into goat rearing or you're just planning to join the business but you don't know how to do it perfectly? Move with me as we discover the secret in goat rearing. Today I present to you a very experienced man who is into agribusiness, earning and doing it perfectly. Nice to meet you, Mr. Ben. Nice to meet you, Mr. Chris. Yes, briefly, greet our viewers. Yeah, thank you for watching Smart24 TV. Uh, my name is Obed Ben, uh, a genius in agribusiness, especially in goat farming. Okay. We do goat farming on a large scale. Uh, here in Uganda and we are so 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 much pleasured that uh, Smart24 has given us a visit. We are here and we are going to see how we can make money from goats farming and why goats. Yes, as we move on generations change. So what is trending in goat farming? What's new? Actually, if I'm to mention about agribusiness, there is no way any farmer can mention about agribusiness and then forget what we call goat farming. Because this is the only project or agribusiness sector in Uganda where you can invest 100 million and earn 100 million within one year. It is the only business that requires very minimal expenses but yet yields a lot of money. Only that Ugandans, as because of the fact that we do not consider a lot of things, we only consider what has been considered. So we, we are we are pre we don't pre-consider, we consider after we do what we call post-consideration. Yes. If Chris has done something, I too can do it. If nothing has been done about something, none, no one and nothing can be done about that. So that is the problem. If you understand the project, what we call the agribusiness project, for example, this got you're seeing here. I use 50,000, 50,000 Ugandan shillings to take care of it from security, feeding, lighting, labor, drugs, insurance, and everything. Just 50,000. Yet it gives me another 550 per year. So if I'm getting 550 per year, it means I'm going to take the expenses of 550,000, then I have profits of one. Of 500,000. Yes, Mr. Ben, yes. someone out there is, is into goat farming yes. or someone is planning to do it, but they are struggling. How do you make it? Uh, the problem is, like I said, we do not take goat farming for a serious business. We are doing it because of culture. This is the number one reason we will never ever have money from what we take in for agriculture. Take me for example. Someone will rear two, 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 two goats like this. What can they do? Nothing. You will not vaccinate them. You will not uh, use a car side on them every week. You will not put two security guards like the ones you are seeing here. So what it means, for you to get money, you have to consider it for a business. Some things that we don't consider, one, vaccination. Problems like outbreaks will never stop coming. That is a 100% guaranteed if you're in Uganda or in Africa. So you have to do vaccination about seven times a year. So it means that seven shots you have to give each goat. Then you have to do what we use, we call a caricide, use of a caricide. 
you should use a carotide at least once a week. So if you're using that, then you have the free range system, then you have what we call good feeding. Then you have a vet at the farm. A vet. What is the purpose of the vet? To always check on the health of the goats. You understand? Then, after doing that, make sure you do what we call deworming. People don't deworm, don't vaccinate, don't spray the goats. How do you expect to get money? If your car cannot survive without fuel and service, why do you expect goats to survive without fuel and service? These goats must be taken care of just like any other business. In this business, we don't pay trade license. Out together. In this business, we do not pay trade license. What do we pay? We pay use of a car side, we pay security people, we pay uh, vaccination, we pay the warming, we pay for such things that will keep these goods in good condition. And if you too can try that, my dear friend, for example, look here, it is hard raining here. I don't know if you can feel it but it is very, very hardly raining. But check, it is very dry, very dry. So if your goats are staying in such a thing, where it is dampness, you can never expect to get money. What are the qualifications of the structure for the goats? One, a structure should be drained, should be drained all the time. Yeah. So it means while you're constructing a structure, you have while you're constructing a structure, you have to consider the drainage system because you will not stop rain from raining, even when it has a shelter. But there's no drainage system. Trust me, this house will become damp, and when it becomes damp, you will not get free of pneumonia. And pneumonia does not let goats, especially these goats for meat production. You can never have flesh. They will always be skinny till the end of time. So. You have to consider drainage, so that when it rains, just like you can see, the water flows, then it dries. Two, it has to have raised pieces of land. You can see how they are enjoying. You see, this is what we are talking about. So they are at the top. They like raised pieces of land. And three, you have to consider what we call wood. They are chain links. They are chain links. Uh, so they are chain links. There are chain links here, but we cannot use them. There are chain links, but we cannot use them because we want worms. So we are using wood in, in order to make sure that only a, enough wind, enough air can come in. But now the same wood gives us what we call worms. So because of the worms, we keep very well. So. Making a shelter will be determined by how much you have in your pocket. Because anything can make a shelter. Do not try to make something that is very expensive because your specialist has told you to do so. What you have to do is what, do, what you have to consider are three things. At least leave out the, the rest. Drainage. It should be on something slanty so that when it rains, water flows. Then two, it has to have a shelter. Whereby that when it rains, these goats can get can harbor inside the shelter so that they don't be beaten by rain all the time. Then three, you have to clean it all the time. So that is it. Aeration, it is fully aerated. It has a bit of sunlight. That is why you see the whole of the other space is free. It is just the shelter on one side. That's it. So do not be even you don't have to use iron sheets if you cannot afford them. You can use taplins, you can use uh, these uh, black pepper, black polysin. You can use anything that, as long as it protects, it protects the wa the water from reaching the goats. That's it. Yes, Mr. Ben, you've explained to us about the shelter. Yes. 
Now tell us about the breeds. How can you get the best breeds for your farm? Now I'm telling you, a farmer, we've been to several functions, several exhibitions, trying to show you the kind of breeds that will really make you money. Make sure you have the right breeds. The right breeds make the right money. If you're getting wrong money, if you're getting little money from the business of goats farming, it means you are using the worst breeds there is. If one goat has to take three years before you can sell it, then be sure you are going to die of poverty. Here in agribusiness, we do not consider just goats. We don't consider the number. All we consider is the quality. We have here goats of six months that are weighing up to 35 kgs. Goats of two years and are weighing up to 80 kgs. So what am I trying to do? Get the best breeds. How do you source the breeds? You have to get an expert. Don't source from anywhere. Let me ask you, do you have a shop for aeroplanes here? So any business that is good has to be sourced from somewhere. How to get exactly specific experts. Not everyone is an expert in goats farming. So why do you go in the market, Moburo? Huh? You go in the Moburo market and you collect goats and you take to your farm. How many diseases have you collected? How many types of inbreeding have you brought? What is your target? So to source the goats from the right people, you have to know exactly the type of market you're going to supply. Yeah. YPA farm, we supply what we call meat production so our target is meat goats so when we are sourcing we get people who are going to give us exactly what is called goat meats so if we're going to go get meat goat, goats that produce meat we'll get we we'll look at karahari we we'll look at savannah we we'll look at bua and we we'll look at mubende so those four types will put in these goats and we mix so that we get the what we call the YPA breed. We have all those breeds in Uganda, we just import them. They are here, they are imported already. Okay. Yes, they are imported already. However, if you want to import, you can as well import if you have the capacity. So, but make sure those breeds have what we call genetic records. Genetic records help us know what is the type of goat. How, long, how old is it? Who is the mother? Who is, yes, who is the father? How many kgs was it born with? How long, how many diseases has it suffered since it was born? All those matter. In as far as, uh, in most especially if you're getting what we call the bats, what you call he goats here in agribusiness, we call them bats. So if you're getting a bat that is going to serve and fuel multiplication of goats, make sure you're getting the best breed for the best market. Now, if you're looking for milk production, there are, there are goats that are reared purposely for milk production. You do not dare go for these same types of goats. There is what we call Senana, Senana goats, Senan goats. There is what we call Ferrari goats. There are a lot of types. So you go look for those specific breeds that are going to give you enough milk because this goat can only produce one liter of milk a day. And remember, it has a kid to, to feed. And this kid also wants one what? One kid. So one liter of milk. So if you buy this, you're only going to feed the kids and you'll not have enough milk to supply. So when you get the best, the best breeds, I'm telling you, you come and do what we call management. Disease management. Disease control. How do you take care of the kids? Why you take us there? How how take care of the kids? Eh? Do these breeds grow up in specific areas? Like let me give a, an example, like of matoke. They can go in specific areas, and then some some areas they can't grow. So do these goats also grow up in some areas? Or yes, this is not rice that it can grow in swamps. Like okay, rearing them. Do they, do they have to rear them in specific yes. areas? Yes. Yeah. With rice can only be grown in swamp areas. So if you take goats in swamp areas, you will not make money. They want dry areas. Yes, they want rain, of course they want water. They drink water so much. But you can never survive goats 
in swampy areas. So if you have swampy land, consider selling it and buying dry land or rent somewhere that is dry. If you see all these places, we have a hill there, we have a hill here, we are on the hill. So they will only go to the valley only when they are looking for water to drink. Are together? Yes, they will only go there when they are looking for water to drink. But if not that, you will never find them in the, in the valley. So now tell us, how do you take care of those kids? One, you have to do what we call kid seasoning. Kid seasoning helps you have maturity of goats at the same time. So if your kids, two are born today, one is born tomorrow, three are born the following day, you will not have what we call a kidding season. Let me ask you, if a farmer of maize has a season for harvesting, when do you have a, when do you have a season for harvesting in goats? If today you have a two, three, tomorrow you have a three, you cannot sell goats at the same time. If you want to liquidate the goats, so if they are born together, like in one month or three months, you have about 400 or 600 goats born. So you sell them off if you want money, or you multiply them at once. And this also gives you what we call expense control. You can get one person, you employ them, and they take care of those kids for at least three months, then you let them go because these kids have grown. But if you have continuous reproduction of kids, they will never be, it will never be efficient. Two, you see a raised, a raised kid's pen, you see a raised kid's pen. The importance of that kid's pen is to make sure that the kids are raised. These goats are now mature. They are not as vulnerable as those kids. So these ones can stay here and can sleep in the soil, but the kids can only sleep in a raised piece of land that is free from bacteria and free from dampness. All together. So when we raise them, we put what we call a mattress. Most of you will be evident and tell me that if you give birth to a baby boy today, you'll have what we call jackets, a woolen uh, clothes to, to, to protect the baby from wind and all of that. So we put dry, dry grass there so that we can ensure these kids are well catered for, they sleep and they have the worms. That is the importance of dry, dry grass. Then you have to deworm them at least twice a month. Every after two weeks, you have to deworm them with either river pass or any other dewormer. Then you have to give them vitamin A. Remember these kids are very young, so they need what we call immunity. Then three, vitamin A is given to them at least once a week until they are three months. Then you vaccinate. Then you use a caricide on them. Do not spare them because you think they are young. When a tick comes, it will not only eat, go on this one. Even on the, grow, on the young ones, it will still attack them and these kids will die. So you will not make money. So what you do, make sure you take care of the kids. We don't expect a lot of money from these goats. Take for example, you have constructed your own house and this house is going to give maybe rentals. It gives you what we call monthly income. So, you do not expect money from the same house by selling it. Uh -uh. But it is this house that is giving you money per month. So, this goat gives you money per year. Out together. So, you do not count a lot of money from this. What money does the goat give you? The kids. When they grow, you sell them off or they help you multiply. So, those are the profits we get from there from the goats. You take care of these mothers and the kids, then multiplication. So you have to take care of the goats so much of the kids. You have to give them intensive care and then you ensure multiplication. Yes. When do you remove them from the cage? When, when, do, they, when do they start sleeping outside? At three months. At three months? Yes. Eh? Okay. Yes. When they are three months, we release them. They start going out with the mothers. Yes. So now let's talk about the feeding. How do you feed these goats? Here at our farm, we use 90% natural grass. Natural. We have not planted anything. You can see for yourself. 
We have what we call acacia. In Luganda, it is called akasana or usana. Huh? In Luganda, it is called akagando. So, akagando, acacia, or usana is what these goats eat and they make muscle. I call these goats factory. They use grass and give me dollars. You understand? So, this is a, a dollar manufacturing company. We are manufacturing dollars from these goats and we are using what? Grass. The natural grass. So, Ugandans, a lot of them have this natural grass. So maybe sometimes we add what we call elephant grass. Sometimes we add um, we add some maize bran because we have plenty of it. And sometimes when it is raining like this, we can put for them there. We can put for them some silage. But to a lesser extent, most especially we use the natural grasses. And this is how we are making money. For you who are in maybe small pieces of land, you may consider planting alfalfa, you may consider planting uh, uh, sugar grains, you may consider planting maize, and maybe acacia tree if you can find it, you also plant it. Then you may you make sure they have a big play area, then you, 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 you put food traps and they will eat. They also give you some good money. Okay. Yes. I was going to ask you, do you sometimes let them out to gun source for themselves food or? Here. Yeah. Every time. Mm. Every time they go out. They go out of this cage. Yes. They wow. go out every time. This is a free range. Okay. Free range system. Yeah. They, we don't feed them from here. Only when it is raining like this and maybe it takes long, that's when we give them supplements. And uh, occasionally we also give them maize bran to, 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 to make some little fats on them because sometimes they move some long distances. But in most cases, at, at exactly 10 a.m. in the morning, we let them out. Why do we let them out at 10 a.m.? Because the dew on the grass is dry, so they will not have what we call foot rot. So sometimes some farmers will release the goats at, at 6 a.m. in the morning. 6 a.m., just be sure they are going to have what we call off, and they are going to have the, the foot rot, and still will not, not, will not make, make, make money. So when you release them at 10 a.m., they go out, you feed them, they you enjoy, they become so big like you can see this. These goats you're seeing here, all of them are one year and below. All of them. So this is a new farm. Why? Because investors come in, they invest their money, they keep their money here. We buy, we, we, we sell, we, 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 they buy goats from us. So these are all one year goats. So we put them here, they come and see them. Even like today you'll see them seeing. So a goat of one year which is weighing at 35, 40 kgs, 50. So it means by the time it is three years, it is going to be very, very heavy. And all by natural supplements. Natural, this is how we, I don't know. Some people say that Uganda is uh, the pearl of Africa. Yeah. I doubt. <laughs> Uganda is the pearl of the world. Wow. You, you, you should try traveling. These people were so proud that they couldn't give us a position we deserve. If you go to any other country, not even Netherlands, not even Brazil, where they say that farmers are so good, here in Uganda, just imagine we have taken this same goat to about eight, eight countries, and every country we have taken these goats, they have been successfully bought, and we have contracts all, from all those eight countries internationally. Malaysia, China, Israel, Germany, uh, Poland, now we have uh, Egypt. So... All those countries buy this meat, yet it is naturally organic. So Ugandans, the only problem we have is we think we have to sit in the chairs, we roll around, then we get money. Who says so and why? So tell me, are we not making money? You're, you're in all your office. How many countries have you traveled to and what products have you put on the international market? So. If the goods can go in the international market, why stay in your office? You're making 1 million, 500,000, 2 million. Are, is that really going to help you reach the target of lifting Uganda from this third world to maybe the second world or to the first class? If we do not wake up. China is what it is because of agriculture. Russia is what it is because of agriculture. America, the one you're talking about running to. Our grand great parents went there and they were doing agriculture. So why not do the agriculture here? Yet we are so blessed more than they are. So we should consider 
what advantages do we have within? Then we can create the America we deserve, we can create the America we want. Not America as in America, but the beauty of the world is within us. So if we keep crying, then we are brokers, we broke the iPhone, we broke the, 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 the smart Samsung. We know where things are sold, but we cannot produce anything. So if we are not producers, whenever we sell something that has been produced, we are marketing that something, and that something is from someone who makes more money than you, the broker, or the, someone in the chain. Make sure you're always at the beginning of the chain and Uganda is the greatest country I've ever seen. Mr. Ben, yes. let's go for a short commercial break and we'll be back to talk about the maturity period, the security, everything. Let's go for a short commercial break, we shall be back. Mm -hmm. 